Is your agency ensuring that medical correctional nurses are being escorted during med pass in CM units, special needs units, everywhere? Well, I hope so. And here's why. I'm going to talk about why we need to be escorting our correctional nurses. I put that question out on one of the correctional officer sites and happily 98% of the answers I got was absolutely and many people gave reasons why and some people said why even ask that question? It's pretty obvious that we need to, to escort the nurses, right? But the reason I asked the question is because of that 2% that we got answers about two percent and I won't name the locations two of the prisons I got answers from two people at two different prisons says no we do not do that here at such and such prison and another place has reports that even when requested by the nurses to please escort they're shunned off sometimes as when I'm not going to escort you out it's not in my policy and procedure. Well, if it's not in the policy and procedure, the agency better relook some things because you're responsible. We, as correction officers, are responsible for the safety and security of what goes on in the prison. This is a very simple answer. Yes, we need to be escorting the nurses. It doesn't get much simpler than that, but since we have some areas that are not escorting, or refusing to escort a nurse, let's go over why we need to escort nurses. And there's a lot of reasons why, including lawsuits, and I'll get to that at the end. The agency definitely doesn't want to have a lawsuit against them. Number one, personal safety for the nurse. We know at any given moment, anyone in the inmate population can become violent at any given time, especially in the special needs unit, CM units, things of this nature, where we have more problems. It's a lot of a lot, a lot of the problems are based on you know one area being known for strictly violent inmates, another area being known for inmates with mental illnesses. Okay, tough areas. But it doesn't matter, even in the general population. When I worked in the state and in the jail, we always escorted the nurse. And the last place I worked from and retired from, the, the, the Polk County Sheriff's Office, you better be with that nurse. If something goes down and that nurse gets hurt, medication gets stolen, anything of this nature, you're going to write the answer report on why the heck you weren't there to, to make sure safety and security was enhanced and and the nurse was safe okay that's that's one reason the personal safety of a nurse nurses have been it's been documented that they've been cut by inmates who have had hidden razor blades while they're handing out medication they've been grabbed by inmates they've had urine thrown on them they've had feces thrown on them just like we as officers have had and, and somebody out there is going to tell me they're not escorting the nurses? What about the nurse being grabbed and, and sexually assaulted? You know, um, felt up. Okay, I'll just say it that way. And there's no officer there to protect her. It's, it's beyond me that any staff member would sit there and say, not my job, not my policy and procedure. Uh, leave me the hell alone or whatever. Now that's happened, folks. you got to be kidding me. Where's the leadership? Where is the leadership? Where's the training? Something's wrong. When that happens to a nurse requesting to be escorted, there's something wrong because our responsibility is the safety and security of everyone behind the razor wire. You put a uniform on, you wear that correctional officer name proudly, you wear that badge proudly, you took that oath to serve and protect, hey, get up off your ass and serve and protect those 2% I'm talking to. The 98% that gave those answers, uh, 
that they definitely do. They always do. They said, one person said, well, if, I, if we didn't escort the nurses, that's the one quick way to find yourself standing in front of the warden answering why you did not do that. So that tells me this 2% that is not escorting nurses in the state of Florida. I know people are like, where's this happening? I'll go ahead and put it out there. I won't give names. I'll give the state of Florida. In the state of Florida, something's not right in that area, and it needs to be checked into. Why isn't everyone in the state on the same sheet of music? Or is it just a couple of rogue officers too lazy to get out of their chair causing these things to happen? Or is it management not enforcing it or allowing it to happen or being made aware that it's happening and doing nothing about it? Well, you see, when this happens, folks, and we get an injured nurse, not that the nurses will do this, but they have the right to, negligence. Is that negligence? Well, you can say no, but I wonder what a civil trial would say, a judge in a civil trial or a civil jury, if it went that far, because we allowed a nurse to get injured or hurt. You know, in civil trial, you only need a preponderance of the evidence. Here's the scales of justice. You just slightly need to tip that scale. You only need 51% proof in a civil trial that negligence occurred and your agency has to pay out a ton of money. There was one case somewhere in the United States not long ago where a nurse had boiling urine thrown in her face and there was no one there to help her. She's, she's suing. You know, I'm not saying that we need a sue happy world, but you know, if we're not doing our job and a nurse's face is scalded now with boiling urine from an inmate, I really can't blame her for taking that up to, uh, all the way up. I mean, come on, somebody is not doing their job. We need a wake up call for those places that are not escorting correctional nurses. We're a team, right? We're supposed to be a team. It's not us versus them. It's correctional officers, correctional nurses, counselors, teachers. We should all be communicating and working together. Not just sitting on our ass, getting paid a paycheck, and not getting up and escorting these people, these civilians, when they walk through and do things among the inmate population. Do we have to wait till somebody gets hurt to wake your ass up? Yes, I'm pretty strong on this topic. Protection, that's what we need to give these people. Don't we, as officers... All the time say, hey, management, you're not giving us the proper tools to protect ourselves. We have poor equipment. We have poor cell doors that don't lock. Can you do something about that so the inmates don't get out of the cell and attack an officer? Okay, think about the civilian staff. How they feel walking in that prison, you know, with no radio, most of them. No way to call for help. Not trained the way you are as a correctional officer in security and self-defense. And hopefully, the ones that aren't sitting on their ass, you know, they're out there trying to do some exercises, stay in shape. You know, to, to protect yourself and others. That's our job. You took an oath. Just wanted to get this message out there. Please let me know if you're not Escorting your nurses, why you're not doing it? I, I'm just curious. A um, lot of um, open areas when you don't escort your nurses, as I just discussed. Lawsuits, injuries, responsibilities, you know, serve and protect, that's our job. Let me know why, and let me know where your policy and procedure says that you don't have to. Um, I hate, to, I hate to see something that says I don't have to escort a nurse or it doesn't say you should or shall somewhere in one of your policies and procedures. I hope in training that you're being trained when the nurse comes what you're supposed to do 
If not, we need to get better at that. Okay. We all need to work together to protect each other. I just wanted to get that message out there. Thank you very much. Gary York, True Prison Stories. Please subscribe.